I want to thank you for joining me today. It's uh, Wednesday, June 6, 2018 for another video devotional. And uh, I felt like even yesterday and maybe this whole week, I, I'm just taking a little more of your time. And thank you for bearing with me on this very important subject. Uh, it's crushed our society and society in general across the, the globe. I'm talking about Christ's words in Matthew 5, 31 and 32. Furthermore, it's been said, whoever divorces his wife, let him give her a certificate of divorce. But I say to you that whoever divorces his wife for any reason except sexual immorality causes her to commit adultery. And whoever marries a woman who is divorced commits adultery. So as we ended yesterday, I was, I was thinking about this thought that, wow, we, we need to concentrate on certain things. And that is guarding our hearts and, and against hardness and guarding our spirit against uh, coming up with ideas that don't please God in relationship with our spouses. I love this verse in, in Ezekiel 36, 26. In the New Living Translation, it says, I will give you a new heart. I'll put a new spirit in you. I'll take out your stony, stubborn heart and give you a tender, responsive heart. The words in here are so important to us that we, we hear God wants to give us a new spirit and a new heart. I'm believing for some of you who may listen to this and some of you who are listening to you, you're not having issues in your marriage, but you know someone who is and you're going to point them to this today, that they will hear this very clearly. God wants to give you a new heart and a new spirit concerning your relationship with your spouse right now. He wants to restore and renew. You see, there's no doubt in our culture, this me first culture that we live in today, that we can come up with a huge list of reasons for divorce. But if we begin to examine the reasons, we write them out on a piece of paper and we begin to examine those reasons, what's going to happen is something like this. We're going to come back to a list of unresolved hurts, grievances, wrongs done to us and places that we never came through to forgiveness with our spouse. Without coming up with a stack or a list of reasons, let's remember that Jesus states the only cause for divorce is because of sexual immorality. Now, I know many of us want to discuss the exceptions, so I'm going to bring them up. You would ask this question, what about physical abuse? Hmm. What about mental abuse, emotional abuse? What about having a spouse who's totally aloof and cares nothing about the relationship any longer. And maybe he hasn't even spoken to you for months or weeks or God forbid for years. What about the fact that you haven't been one, you haven't engaged in sexual intercourse for a great period of time, not related to physical issues or something like that. What if my spouse is engaged in pornography? What about a workaholic spouse who is never attentive at home? but totally engaged in their work, even when they're at home. Would one not say that one of these or many of these are causes for divorce? So without being insensitive to the plight of those who have either entered an abusive marriage or the marriage grew into abuse or one of the multiple things that we could list today, what does one do? What does one do? Would you advise one to stay in an abusive marriage? Now, personally, I haven't heard one who would defend that. I, I don't know anyone right now who would defend you staying in an abusive marriage. There, there may be some. I'm just saying I don't personally know. I can't remember anyone advising someone to stay in that kind of relationship. And so today what's happened is the reasons for encouraging one to leave that kind of relationship vary from person to for the other person. Various reasons from one person to another. And using scriptures such as 1 Corinthians 13, which teaches us so much about how we're to love one another. Well, they're not doing that for me so I can divorce my spouse because they're not loving me like the Bible says. Or saying this is for my personal sanctity. Uh, sanctity. This is for my sanity. And so I'm going to divorce for this reason. The difficulty is, is that not one specific scripture deals with any of the issues I've listed and maybe numbers that you come up with. But I want to remind us that the 
that the letter of the law does not negate the spirit of the law. The difficulty goes back to choices we have made or someone else has made that has caused us to become an object of their of their actions. How can one not be possibly become hard in heart or bitter when they endure months or years of abuse, mental, physical, sexual, whatever? So I can't answer those questions for you. It has to deal with your heart and your relationship with God. But let me say here clearly that God does not hate divorces. <clears throat> that has to be clear. God hates divorce, but he doesn't hate the people. I cannot find anywhere that divorce is an unpardonable sin. Now, this may not help you. That may not give any consolation to you whatsoever. If you're still living with the sting of what caused a divorce and you're, you're divorcee and, and the pain of that separation when you've left someone you loved and you invested so much in that relationship has happened, it may not remove any of the sting or pain. And that's not my intent today. My intent is to tell you what I believe the Word of God says, and that's what the, the what we are to teach is the Word of God. I don't find a scripture that says that divorce is an unpardonable sin. So we must acknowledge there are times when divorce happens and it catches one blindsided, that it was beyond our control. We didn't even understand it. I've dealt with many of those in counseling. We cry out to God for help in, in those moments when choices we and others have made cause great hurt and pain in our lives. But I want to remind you of certain things. And I, I want the Spirit of God to work in you. And I know that if you're sitting here and listening to this and, and your spouse isn't, you, you're saying, well, I want my spouse to hear this. But you hear this first. You hear this first. God's plan is marriage. One man, one woman for life. But if you're enabling that spouse because you've been abused for a long term, I'm telling you, there needs to be a stop to that, period. Because there are scriptures that deal with how we respect one another and how we love one another. And I, I'm not telling you that's cause for divorce, but I'm telling you that's cause. You say, draw the line. If the line isn't drawn, then you say, you need to leave until you can control your behavior with me. If you've experienced an interruption in God's plan, may you experience God's continual interruption into sin's destruction and realize his mercy and grace over your life today. I pray you'll seek God. Pray you'll fast. Pray your heart will not be hard. Pray no bitterness to enter. Pray the hope of God to rest over you today. And I pray that you'll be challenged. If, you, if you're not dealing with any struggle in your marriage, Come on, you know people that are. Let's let's share the word of God. Let's give them hope and let's ask God for his help. Father God, we ask for your help now. So many marriages in trouble inside the Christian church. People who claim to be followers who are hearing nothing but nonsense and living by Old Testament creeds and women are chattel property and, and this, this list just goes on and on. And Lord, we, we need a, a covenant of grace as well as truth. We need to, the two that are inseparable, truth and grace, that we walk according to the plan of God. All of us, both in a marriage, the husband and the wife, I praise you for your work. I praise you for refreshing. I praise you, Holy Spirit. Convict of sin and of unrighteousness. Break through the barriers. God, bring hope. I praise you for it. I pray for healing. Pray for healing over the hurts. Pray that the balm of Gilead, the precious ointment from the spirit of living God to flow today over broken hearts in the name of Jesus. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Amen. May you look to God today. May we find in him the greatest peace. God bless you. I pray for your restoration. I pray for your hope. I pray you'll be an instrument of that reconciler between God and man for the hope of the world. Be blessed.